Hey y'all, so today is January 11th, 2023, and it is my first day attempting to wear the hijab full time. Okay. Okay. No, because why am I getting nervous? It's always these sit down videos. This just feels too serious. Like, <laughs> oh, it's hot. I'm so sorry guys if y'all hear the fan i really do apologize from the deepest parts of my soul but like one thing about this hijab you're gonna sweat okay what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you guys hear the fan in the background i am so sorry it is so hot in my house right now let me check the degrees because it ain't no way okay it's 75 outside my room has a lot of windows so naturally my room just feels a lot hotter than any other part of the house but i had to film it in here because i just feel most comfortable in here with you guys and i really just want this to be like a girl chat video you know just girls talking so yeah i am very excited for this video i have dreamt of filming this video for years i'm a content creator and it's very hard to disguise big life changes especially ones that you wear externally so yeah i asked you guys on instagram and on the community tab here on youtube what your questions were for me because left to me i will talk for hours about why I did this, what moved me, what this is, what this means for my channel, things like that. But I made sure to ask y'all the questions so y'all could keep me straight on the subject. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I can already sense that this is gonna be a long video and your girl is getting a little thirsty. So let me go make myself a glass of water and then come back and we'll get started. So today I'm sipping on another water drop micro drink and this is in the flavor love one of my favorites it's made with pomegranate goji berry and acerola if you aren't already familiar with water drop they're basically a company that makes <laughs> they're basically a company that makes these little micro drinks and the micro drinks are packed with vitamins and they also help with rapid hydration they have tons of other flavors they also have micro teas which are essentially the same thing except you put this in hot water and it kind of gives the same vibe as tea i personally love these because i feel like they mimic the same vibe as throwing your favorite fruits in water and i am a fruit and water girly okay i love to flavor my water it just makes it easier to stay hydrated throughout the day one of my 2023 goals is actually to stay on top of my hydration when my water tastes like something it just gets easier the water bottle is actually also from water drop as well get into it it is so so freaking cute and i feel like the cuteness makes me want to drink a lot more water which is another step in the right direction so if you are interested in trying it out for yourself make sure to check out the website the link will be in my description box and we are back i just want to preface this by saying that i am nowhere near perfect or the most knowledgeable when it comes to islam i'm really just a regular old girl and if any of these questions are a little bit out of my scope of knowledge i'm searching on my ipad with the quickness and if i can't find it for you there i'll just have to get back to you but i really only want to approach this video speaking from my experience and my thought process and what led to this moment so that is one two if you see me looking down i am looking at my ipad <laughs> Speaking of iPads, it is finally time for me to announce the three lucky winners of my 200k subscriber giveaway! Drum roll, please! Huge congratulations to the three wonderful supporters listed on the screen. Thank you so, so much for entering and showing your girls some love. And an even bigger thank you to everyone else who participated. Oh my God, my comments, I am so overwhelmed with joy. I appreciate your entries and we'll definitely be doing a lot more casual giveaways in the near future just to give back to as many of you as I can. So again, thank you so, so much. And now let's get back to the video. I'm looking at my iPad, so I'm looking at the questions that you guys sent me on my iPad. Three, not really like 
a disclaimer but i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been so kind to me on this journey i had so many reservations going into this i was really afraid of what this change would do to my platform what it would do to all of the opportunities i had i was really afraid but you guys have embraced me so warmly and y'all have just been so so kind so i just want to say thank you so much i really really do appreciate every single one of you but yeah i had to get a box of tissues because who knows what kind of emotions are going to come up in today's video but i really really do hope you guys enjoy it hope these nerves calm down a little bit i think i'm more so nervous about how i will convey this more than the actual message like hijab to me this has been ongoing for a really long time me and this thing you know it's more so like my delivery i'm a little bit afraid of but the girls that will get it will get it so i hope you guys enjoy today's video without further ado let's get right into it so the first question is what is the hijab what do i feel like i'm in sunday school again basically the hijab i think the direct translation is veil head covering something of that sort but um the main idea is modesty. Islam is very, very big on modesty for men and women, and it looks different for each of us. I only know so much as what a woman is supposed to do, but I know that there are requirements for men as well. The next question is, why do you have to wear it? Essentially, it's because God says so. Um, you guys might hear me using the word Allah and God interchangeably. They mean the same thing. Allah says in the Quran that women are supposed to lower their gaze and guard their modesty, guard their private parts, guard basically everything from unrelated men. The next question is when can you take it off? I can take it off anytime I want to, um, mainly because there is no compulsion in religion. I'm not forced to do anything. No one is forcing me to do this. No one is holding it over my head. Of course, it's a command by Allah, but I have free will because I'm a human, same way you do. I choose to wear it because it's a command from Allah and it's a way that I am choosing to submit to his command. And the next question is, is it permanent? Inshallah, it is permanent. Inshallah means God willing. I pray in my heart that it's permanent. The goal is for it to be permanent from this point onward, but I can only do my best and I will continue to do my best. When and how did you decide that it was the right time for you? Well, the, if the, okay. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know or are new here or just have not been watching me for a while, I started a hijab journey almost 10 years ago. It was in the summer before my last year of high school. And I was just in a season of major conviction. I was on a high, like I was just so devoted. And I decided that I wanted to start covering. I think if I had proper guidance, I would have kept it going, but the ways in which I went about it were a little bit scary to the people around me. It was out of nowhere, out of nowhere to everybody else. To me, you know, this was brewing up inside me. This was something I would talk to God about. This was something that I would research, but everyone else doesn't see that part. They just see the part where you put it on. So they're like, whoa. Um, but back then, like I just went from A to Z, like I almost wanted to wear niqab. And to my family who, you know, is religious, but not many people wear the hijab in my family it was very strange so a lot of people were concerned about me and basically were I don't want to say they were guiding me against it but they were but they were definitely you know reminding me that I'm young and that I don't need to put it on so soon I do wish the guidance would have been different but I know they had good intentions at the same time I think if someone would have helped me pace myself to slowly grow up to the level I wanted to be at that would have been great but you know things happen but yeah that was the last like major peak i had of spirituality and deep deep rooted connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then after then it just plummeted <laughs> i cannot tell you how or what but you know like everyone with their journeys with faith it sways it changes it's different every day and without the right tools you can get weak and just lose that grip that you had. I hope my words are making sense, but yeah. I can't believe the last time I felt as convicted as I do now was when I was 15, but I think that's the reason why I took it upon myself to put it on this time and to keep it on because I'm a lot older now, I'm a lot wiser now, and if it took me 10 years to get to the point of connection that I have with my creator now, 
I don't want to miss out on this opportunity again because I don't know how long it will take me to get back here. Luckily now though, I have the tools, I have the knowledge, I have access to the things to help, you know, fill my cup up when I'm losing faith. So yeah, essentially 10 years of experiences and just lessons were really what brought me here. The tip of the iceberg was the beginning of last year i think that's where i started really 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 taking this change this potential change in you know lifestyle in appearance very seriously because that's where my faith was tested most so yeah essentially it took me 10 years to come back to islam and to you know be fully devoted fully connected to god and just like striving to learn and 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 stay here about a year ago is when i made the decision within my heart that i am going to wear the hijab soon i just don't know when and then it kind of just led up to this moment so the next question is with all the scrutiny that comes with living your life on social media what gave you the strength to start your hijab journey that's a really good question again it's the connection that i have built with god behind the scenes the disappointments i've experienced over the past year all of the things that have taken place in my life behind the scenes guys it's so funny because i come on camera and i'm just making matcha teas i'm decorating my room but like there are real things that happen behind the scenes and i just want to remind you guys that about content creators and people you see online they have real stuff going on behind the scenes and you will never know if they don't want you to know uh, but the point is to just like be graceful with people because you never know what they're going through what they're on the brink of but last year broke me down and it forced me into god's hands and I'm already getting a little bit emotional, so I'm going to stop there. But my strength right now really only comes from God. Oh my God, I didn't know I was going to cry so soon. Okay. Whew. I'm sorry, guys. So yeah, I will say social media was a scary thing to think about social media was not scary it was my platform that i built for myself that was scary but my strength and reliance on god overpowered all of those fears and that's why i'm wearing it today since starting your journey have you felt a difference in your overall confidence absolutely i feel so beautiful i have never felt this beautiful in my hijab there is a variety of things that are playing into this number one i have completely shifted or rather i have completely decentered men and the male gaze from my life i don't actively think about them when i go into the world and what i mean by that is that i don't consider what they'll think i look like if i put this on and there were periods in my life where i was very hyper focused on what men would think if i dressed like this if they would like that this would be attractive to them the things i experienced last year really 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 forced me like i said into a place where i am heavily reliant on god and for that reason a lot of my confidence is not rooted in what i look like and there were periods in my life where my confidence was only what I looked like. It had nothing to do with what I had to offer internally. It was just what you could see externally that really determined how I felt about my confidence. And if I had a day where, you know, I had a pimple or I was a little bloated, I just felt like I was worthless because I didn't look good. But I know that who I am, my self-worth is intrinsic. Like, I don't have to fake it or force it i have value naturally and two it's not just what i have to offer on the outside like i am so many things more than this body than this vessel so yeah i think my confidence just comes from maturing a little bit and recognizing that my external body is not all that i have to offer and in god's eyes like i'm perfect <laughs> Like, I'm made exactly how I'm supposed to be. My hijab has just reinforced that, especially for the fact that he is the number one reason why I'm doing it. Hijab is just the icing on the cake. I feel so beautiful in the hijab everywhere I go, every single day. I'm not even kidding y'all. When I'm about to go to the gym, I take pictures of myself and I, I don't post them. I literally just keep them for my own sake because I love looking back at them like... I am look I look absolutely phenomenal and it feels good to be modest. I don't know why people are so 
against it these days. I think women should be allowed to do what they want to do. And they, they should choose how they want to present themselves in the world. But I don't think women should be looked down upon if they choose to expose themselves or if they choose to cover themselves. I think women should just be looked at like women with choices. Uh, but that's just me though. Do you feel confident in the hijab without makeup on? This is a really good question. Yes, I do. But there are some steps I need to take in order to feel good um, with my makeup on. Of course, praying fudger, top of the list. I need to do my skincare. I can't just like have a crusty face and put on my hijab and feel confident. Well, I'll feel confident, but I won't necessarily feel pretty. I can do the whole no makeup thing with the hijab. I just need to make sure like my skin is moisturized. Then like it's game on. I'm ready for anything. I'll show up anywhere just like that. Have you noticed a difference in how people you know as well as strangers treat you since wearing the hijab? Yes, not so much in the people I know though, but definitely the people I don't know. Um, and what's weird about this is that when I started out, I was more fearful of what the people I do know would think because I was just like, oh my God, I wonder what's going through their heads. Like, do they just think I'm crazy? But my family has been very supportive. Every time my mom sees me in the hijab, like she just starts screaming, mashallah, mashallah. She calls me alaja, she calls me hijabite. I don't think that's a word, but she loves calling me hijabite. And if she's on the phone with somebody, while she sees me walking by, she'll be like, we have a new hijabite in town. If you didn't know, like she's always hyping me up any chance that she gets. And I pray God blesses her for that because it really do be helping. Um, but as far as people I don't know, people say salam to me in public. And that has been like the most wholesome experience throughout all of this. Like just being recognized as a Muslim in public has just been like it warms my heart so much that whether they're Muslim or not, they see that I'm Muslim. Every time in the past where I had to tell somebody that I was Muslim when I wasn't covered, it just felt so awkward. I was just like, are they going to believe me or are they going to think I'm joking? Are they going to think I'm mocking? That was just my experience though. But now that I cover, people are saying salam to me. There was these two old black men the other day and they said something. They called me sister and it was really sweet because um, any other time they probably would have hollered and asked for my number but no they were like how you doing sister hope you having a good day sister and I was like that's so sweet I don't know maybe that's just me but um yeah no cat calling no uncomfortable stares or at least I don't notice the stares it's been a very very wholesome experience wearing it alhamdulillah yeah I have no complaints do you worry that wearing a hijab permanently could slow your community growth? Since a lot of girls who've watched you for hair installs can't relate anymore. Yes and no. This was a big, big fear of mine initially, um, but my thought process since then has completely transformed because I am just really big on alignment right now and I only want things that are aligned with me. So if someone does not feel like they can relate to me anymore, I don't want them to stick around and that goes for anyone watching this video i really love y'all like i appreciate every view every like every comment but i will never force you to stay here if you do not feel like you can still relate to me or find some type of enjoyment or entertainment in my content um that takes maturity to say myself in the because to me well last year shaking quivering at the thought of rejection but i don't see it like that anymore like i want you and me to engage with things that make us happy so if this don't make you happy that's fine right now no i'm really not worried about that in fact i know that there are so many more people who will benefit from me wearing the hijab and so many of you guys have already oh my god every time i see a comment about one of you guys wanting to do this as well but being scared or being inspired by me to start my eyes well up because i'm like there are so many beautiful hijabis on the internet i don't see many people becoming hijabis i see more people taking it off and whatever women choose to do is fine but I think the representation for women putting it on would be very, very beneficial for those who are afraid and who are not seeing that online and who just don't have the guidance like I didn't have 10 years ago. So I'm not, I'm not worried about what's not already for me anyways. I'm only focused on what is for me and who is supposed to be here. So yeah. Someone also asked, will you reject paid hair collabs and sponsorships going forward? Um, yeah pretty much yeah straightforward yes unless there was a way like if there was a brand that just wanted me to speak about a product 
I'd be happy to do that, but I will not be putting anything on my head or revealing my hair or anything like that. Are there times where you miss styling your hair? Because that's what's holding me back from starting. Mmm, that's a good question. Honestly, you guys, like, I think I really exhausted the little, you know, the hair avenue. As in, like, I've done everything. I've dyed my hair relaxed it gone natural what haven't i done i've worn wigs braids i've cut it short i've worn it long i've blown it out i've straightened it and with every single one of those things like there's like this temporary like oh yes i am just the baddest like i just look so good nobody can compete with me nobody is on my level and then after two days it fades away because the hair is not fresh anymore so i really don't miss that because it's it's really only a three four max day high of your hair looking amazing and then it just falls from there so i don't really miss it i have a lot of pictures that i like to look back on of me like slaying wigs and i'm like mm, yes girl you did eat that up but um right now i don't miss styling my hair but if you are someone that misses styling your hair you don't have to reject that completely once you start wearing the hijab you can literally still style your hair in the comfort of your home or in the comfort of your girls or in the comfort of your family like you can still do the things that you love just privately without men who are not related to you seeing that you don't have to give up on that like you can still have like girls nights and just events with your girls where you get to show them how beautiful your hair is since you're now practicing hijab do you consider questions about your hair to be inappropriate no no you can ask me anything about my hair um i i don't have much to say if you want to know something about how i'm taking care of my hair now i'd be happy to let you know what has been working for me and what has not been working for me um i think questions from the opposite sex about my hair are inappropriate because like i'm wearing it so i'm wearing it because of you but like girls i don't think you guys understand i'm really a girl's girl so if you want to know something like just ask me i answer 90 percent of my dms almost all of my comments y'all should know this by now and then the next question was any hair care tips for under the hijab first of all guys let me remind y'all i just arrived so it hasn't been that long i started january 11th and since then i am be honest with y'all my hair has been in straight backs i oil it every single night that's actually a problem oh my battery dang so my camera died i have taken it out and washed it because obviously when you do go so you have to wash but um besides that like i just keep it in braids i'm low-key considering getting micro locks i've been seeing a lot of the girls on tiktok saying that that is the um the absolute most elite hairstyle to have as a type 4 girly under the hijab because it's so low maintenance it's easy to do whistle and yeah life is just easy so like i'm I'm this close. I really would just recommend oiling your scalp, washing it as often as your hair needs to be washed. My hair does not like to be washed very often. So once every like three weeks is good enough for me. Plus it's not exposed to the elements so it doesn't get dirty as fast which has been pretty nice. I like that part. I really do enjoy that part. Um, I see a lot of girls say stuff about like you know their edges getting thin from under caps and stuff like that. I haven't experienced that yet thank god. My edges are low-key just recovering from the wigs I used to wear so I'm praying that that's not my portion. One thing I have been experiencing though which is very weird sometimes the oil in my hair from last night will seep through my underscarf and seep through my hijab and you'll see like stripes of oil on my head. What what is that? Cause that oil should have seeped into my hair follicle or something, but instead it's like sitting on top. I don't know. Maybe I'm oiling my hair too frequently and that's why it's happening. Um, but like I'd be having to wear two undercaps now just to prevent that from happening. But those are mainly my hair care tips. Later on down the line, when I have a little more experience, I will definitely be sure to let you guys know what is working for me. Because I do not gatekeep over here. I want everybody to win. I want y'all to know what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, I'm getting thirsty. I need some water. Oh. How do you feel transitioning to a full-time hijabi as an influencer in terms of deleting photos, videos, losing partnerships, etc.? Um... Like I said, I'm only interested in what is for me, what is aligned for me, what is written for me. So I'm not chasing after anything that is running from me. And if followers or partnerships or anything like that want to run from me, 
then they're lost. I really can't do much about it. And then the following question was, are you going to delete your past content like the other hijabis do? A lot of y'all have been curious about this and um, I'm happy to answer. There are a lot of things that I have already deleted up until this point or rather archived. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll notice that at least 200 videos have been archived. I really only have like 100 videos on my channel now. Same with my Instagram, same with my TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, like everything. I have done my best to take down as much as I possibly can. Naturally, when you post things, they're kind of just there forever. So if you go on Google and you search my name, you will see some of these pictures. But I just pray that over time, as the years go by, those pictures will kind of bury themselves. And majority of the photos of me will be me covered. Um, there's only so much I can do to remove everything. There are some things that I have signed contracts with brands for, so there's certain time periods that I cannot delete certain pieces of content. So mainly the only things that are left up are the things that were sponsored content that had my hair in them, but Allah knows my heart, Allah knows my intention, and I've done my best. I'll leave the rest in his hands. I hope that makes sense. A lot of people will not understand that and that's totally fine. Um, everyone's hijab journey looks completely different. I just wanted to clarify that because a lot of people get lost in the appearance of things and some people will see something and think, oh, this girl's just playing around or this girl is not serious about this. How could she have not deleted everything? There's a reason behind that. And there's always a reason behind anything you see online. And I wish more people would be slow to the more critical judgment of others. Like, especially within the Muslim community, as soon as we see something, we're so quick to jump on the negative side instead of thinking positively of our brothers and sisters. Like, why when you see someone, the first thing you think about is that there is a negative connotation behind this or they're doing this for a negative reason instead of the fact that maybe they're doing something positive it's just disguised and weird to you so um yeah this is gonna be weird to people but i wear hijab now and god knows my intentions once again next question does sharing your journey put pressure on you to rush and make this permanent instead of practice um well it is technically permanent but it's practice in the sense that it's a journey and I'm starting out something fresh. Think of it like a baby. Like I, I am a baby learning to walk. I have worn my hair out for a majority of my life, but now I am trying to navigate the world as someone who covers their hair and covers their body and guards their modesty. This is all very, 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 very new to me. So I am really doing my best and treading as lightly as I can and making sure that, you know, I'm checking my, I am purifying my intentions as much as possible and praying over the things I do, the things I wear, things like that. But there definitely has been a little bit of pressure in the sense that, you know, you come on the internet, you don't know what is going to be said. And I have had like a few random hate comments here and there that have just been so like, be so for real right now. Like be, you would not say that to a baby or a child that's learning to walk. So why do you feel the need to say that to me? Like people love to compare their level of Iman or their level of conviction or their level of experience with certain things with other people who are not nearly on the same level as them, but you're using the harshness. First of all, you shouldn't even be using harshness, but people use harshness to make other people feel bad. And then they think they're practicing faith because they're advising their brothers and their sisters. You're not supposed to do it like that. So let's let's check, check that tone, okay? You should not be this bothered about somebody else's business. But yeah, there has been a little bit of pressure because like I, I feel like I'm forced to do things at a quicker speed because people are watching. I would have taken my time more if I wasn't on the internet with it but because i'm on the internet with it i want to make sure i'm a good example and i also have the pressure of knowing that some people will just like jump on my neck at the first opportunity that they get literally jump on my neck but alhamdulillah god has been really carrying me through this and making it so easy for me it's only been like a couple of hiccups but everything for the most part has been so light-hearted and god is my witness the amount of blessings i'm gonna start crying again the amount of blessings that have started rolling into my life since I decided to take this leap just in the past month alone and I couldn't even begin to count and list everything out for you guys but just like comparing my life 
right now, January 2023 to January of 2022, the complete stark difference in mentalities and the position I was in and just everything. Like, I'm not complaining. I'm so happy to be here. And it just encourages me more to work on my faith because the more I do, the more I see goodness appear in my life and naturally the more you are faithful your heart is a little more soft and whatever lands in your hands you see it and you embrace it and you're thankful for it so yeah god has made this so easy for me and i can only thank him for that what would you say has been the hardest part of your journey so far hmm can't think of anything i guess actively being on social media while this change has happened has been the hardest thing besides that i'm i'm not like i wish i could convey to y'all how smooth sailing this has been for me um like doors have just been opening it's like i just said i just made the intention within my heart i prayed about it and i stepped out on faith and it's like the path has just been laid out for me i'm just i'm just following the path <laughs> like i don't know what to say what do you love most about wearing the hijab i think i already mentioned it but i love being recognized as a muslim in public and another reason why i love wearing the hijab is that it's become a lot easier to pray um one of the reasons that i actually was so drawn to it in the first place is that i found it so difficult to pray in public or to pray just at any given time of the day because i would never be fully dressed for it but now it's like i'm naturally sometimes already dressed for prayer and it just makes it that much easier like i can't use that as an excuse anymore like oh i can't pray right now i don't have the right clothing for it now like almost every day i'm wearing something i can pray in sometimes like i'll come in from grocery shopping and i look down and i'm like it's us sir and i'll just walk up to my prayer mat in my clothes and pray and i always found that so cool like i don't have to put something on like i'm already dressed like that's amazing where do you find your hijabs they're always so cute thank you right now i have been shopping a sumaya a sumaya shop i was gonna say a sumaya boutique a sumaya shop a sumaya shop is my number one when it comes to um buying hijabs like this scarf that i'm wearing right now can you show us tutorials of different hijab styles because the main thing that discourages me is that i don't feel like i look nice in it um yes i will be doing a lot of hijab like tutorials follow me on tiktok guys because i've been a lot more transparent on there about my hijab journey than i have been on here and i more than likely do a tutorial on there i'm not sure if i'll do a tutorial on here just yet because I, I don't know how it would perform i don't know how many of you would be interested but i know naturally on tiktok that it will find the audience that it needs to sometimes like the youtube algorithm be failing you and it does not find the people that it needs to so i don't want to do it if it's gonna flop there's definitely a style that will work for you you haven't tried everything yet so be open-minded and give yourself a chance to just really explore you don't even have to make a commitment just like if you go to juma on a random friday like just like put it on and try a different style each friday or inside of your house like just try different styles there are countless ways that you can wear the hijab what is the best advice you'd give to an influencer or content creator trying to wear it i would just say make sure you like your your faith is strong make sure your faith is strong and make sure your intent and your reason why you're doing this is strong because it's gonna need to be stronger than what anyone else's opinion is and if you are not strong in that it will be easy for you to fall prey to some of the hate that women who wear hijab get on the internet and we see it all the time like someone will really you know be excited about this put it on get some slander for wearing it a certain way and then they take it off or you know the typical comment that people say you might as well take it off you might as well not wear it let me be the first to tell y'all struggling with your hijab is better than not doing it at all as in you are rewarded for your efforts even if they don't look exactly how it's supposed to look it's the same thing as literally anything going to the gym and having horrible form 
and stepping on the treadmill for two minutes and then dipping is better than not going to the gym at all. Same with reading the Quran. Reading it and stuttering it, not understanding a thing and just struggling is so much better than not trying at all. I don't know where people got this extreme all in or all out mentality, but it's so much better to struggle with something that you want to eventually get good at than to just not do it at all out of fear of you just not being good at it. You'll never get good at it if you don't start somewhere. So the advice I'd give to an influencer is to just make sure you really, really, really want to do this and that your relationship, your connection with your creator is bigger than what anyone around you may have to say about it because I know many people who have had a lot of resistance not just online but with their families in real life who have not you know have done like people who are reverts for example and come from families who do not understand a lick of Islam and see them putting on the hijab like they receive so much pushback and by Allah alone, they still push through and keep it on. That just tells me that their why is deep rooted and that bond with God is some serious. It's some serious because you're, imagine your family. If any of you have ever had an experience where you want to do something to better your faith and your family has just been so resistant towards it, like my heart just goes out to you because if anyone has influence over me in my life, it's my family. Like my mom is one of the biggest influences in my life and I couldn't imagine her not being, oh my God, I'm getting emotional again. Let me check my flow app child because this is a bit much. This is a bit much for it to me. Well, I'm normally a little bit stronger than this. That's why. That's exactly why. <sighs> Cause listen, normally I'm a thug, but like I've just been getting so emotional. Um, so yeah, just make sure your faith is intact. Make sure you're anchored, like you're really in this before you start. And another thing I would suggest is to slowly work up to it. I know a lot of people say to jump into it head first and full force. I personally don't agree with that. I think anything that you want to experience longevity with, you should take your time and be cautious, careful, thought out, you know, intentional about it. So even before now, months before, years before now, low key, as soon as that conviction started building up inside of me, I started doing little things like not shopping for crop tops and looking for longer dresses. I wasn't shopping with the intention of wearing the hijab, but I was like, I just want to be more modest. So I would shop for more modest pieces even before I made the decision within myself that I was gonna wear it. Build up to it, that you don't have to jump head first. Like you don't let anybody scare you. Now I don't mean like dragging your feet to it, but I mean like actively taking steps within your life to work up to it, but at a pace that is suitable for you. The intention alone to get there one day is enough because this is between you and God, remember, and he knows your intention more than anybody else. So take your time, make sure you're sure about it, and just slowly start presenting yourself differently online. Slowly start portraying yourself in a different light and maybe deleting pictures that you feel like no longer represent who you are and continuing on that path so you finally muster up the strength to put on a scarf and walk out the house. Yeah, that's the main advice I'd give, but if any of you have advice of your own, please do comment it down below in the description box, not the description box, in the comment section below. I'd be happy to see what you have to suggest for people who are starting out like me. The next question is, who are your favorite hijabi YouTubers? I'm so happy you asked, child. Let me go to my subscriptions. I have a lot of faves on other apps like TikTok and Instagram, but when it comes to YouTube, I do have a couple of faves too. I just feel like there are not enough black hijabis on YouTube. Is that just me? I see them everywhere else though. I see them on TikTok, I see them on Instagram, but for some reason I do not see enough on YouTube. But some of my faves are Aisha. Aisha is actually someone that I reached out to before I started officially wearing the hijab because I was a little bit apprehensive and I just wanted to hear what she had to say. She's a lot more seasoned in this. She wears it beautifully. She I just love the girl so I reached out to her and she gave me some very kind and wise words of advice which I appreciate so so much. Another one is Aisha Haroon. I really love her videos. An OG fave who doesn't make videos that often but like I was obsessed with this girl in high school okay. Habiba Da Silva. That's my girl. That is my sis.
I don't care what nobody says. I feel like I know her in real life. There was another one, Yas is Fast. She doesn't make YouTube videos anymore, but she was a big, big fave of mine. I still follow her on Instagram and I love engaging with her content and seeing her family. A new one for me is Just Briance or Just Briance. I've been watching her videos lately and I've really been enjoying them. I also love Nafisa's Pearls, Omaya Zane, Jasmine and Dawood. It's a couples channel but the wife is a hijabi and i love their videos too they live in dubai and i love to watch their videos because they just make me feel like i'm there with them steady chai is another channel that i've been watching for a long time i think she's so cute and two more of my absolute faves are with love lena and Yasmin Simone. Her family is absolutely beautiful and I love her videos. I really just wish she would just prop a camera up and just exist with her children because I, I just love watching their dynamic. I, I love watching her interact with them. She's such a good mom. Um, but that is just a few of my faves on YouTube at least. There are so many more that I love on other apps but they just don't make YouTube videos and I wonder why. The very last question is are you getting married? See, I wasn't ready to tell you guys this. Um, mainly because, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm very single and I'm not getting married, at least not to my own knowledge. But, oh my God, I had so much fun filming this video. I was not expecting it to feel this comfortable to open up about this to you guys but i really hope you guys receive it well i just want us to have some understanding so that moving forward we can just grow together let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i definitely need to do another girl talk soon because i had too much fun filming this but i will definitely see you guys in my next video bye guys don't put me on no time i ain't late